My name is Gato. We are glad to be seeing our guests from Opus Initiative Uganda and Might Foundation. Uh, tonight we shall be talking about uh, Lopas, and then we are glad to have you with us. Uh, Mariam, welcome. Welcome on board. Do you hear me? Do you hear me by any chance, Mariam? Can you hear me? Uh, hello. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I don't know my network. I think it's a bit. Great. Yes, I am, I'm happy I to you. Oh, have yes. you. Sorry? I'm happy to Hello I can see you Yes hello uh, but Yes uh you are welcome uh, But can you hear me I can hear you loud and clear Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, okay, uh, lady, the uh, can hear you much better now. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our viewers, this is the Call to Activism Africa, our Saturday show. Uh, today or tonight, depending where you are, we are hosting um, our guests from East Africa, and we are going to be talking about Lopas. Uh, in the studios, we have um, Lady uh, Mariam Nasaje from Uganda, and then uh, Mr. Mpagi uh, Derek from Uganda. You are welcome, ladies and gentlemen, very much welcome. Thank you. Yes, um, we are going to be discussing this very important topic today, and we shall be uh, interested in letting our audience know mm -hmm. about um, sorry can you hear me Mariam can you hear me Mariam I can hear you but I, I think you are breaking a bit can you hear me Uh, Mr. Mpagi, can you hear me? Oh, yes, I'm hearing you loud and clear. Thank you. Yes, I think we are losing um, Mariam. We are losing Mariam there. I can see both of you, but um, we are losing her. Now, Mr. Mpagi, we shall start with you um, on this show. We'd like to know more about you and your organization uh, for a start. Let us know about that. Okay, um, thank you very much. And um, I want to thank you for organizing this show. Um, we need things like this. Um, um, so this is a great start for, for me, at least to be here. Uh, I don't know how long you've been working with Mariam, but we want to push something like this um, further, okay? So I am called Paji Derek, and I'm the executive director of my foundation. And with this organization, my foundation will uh, strengthen world peace at the national level, human rights, and then sustainable development within Uganda. So with uh, autoimmune diseases, um, basically for us, we focus on autoimmune diseases generally, but we work with Mariam so that we can see to it that we can raise awareness about SA lupus in Uganda and Africa at large, uh, because it's not a common disease uh, on the continent, and especially in Uganda, that is amongst doctors and uh, donors who find research for 
this disease. So in summary, that is us. And um, we shall talk more as you uh, continue to host this program. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mpagi. I do think I did um, introduce myself. My, my name is Kato Mukasa. I'm your host with uh, a colleague, Linda Tilly, who is based in South Africa, will be joining us as we move on. We are interested in raising voices, especially uh, handling issues that are rarely talked about in Africa and beyond, and we are proud to host you tonight so that we can be able to know about your campaign. Then we can drum some support across the world and let people know what you are doing and hoping that we shall continue working together with you to promote awareness and let people know about Lopas. So as we wait for um, Mariam, may you please tell the viewers what Lopas is and what are the causes uh, for Lopas? Um, thank you. Okay, so lupus, um, in summary, is an autoimmune disease um, that is caused by, um, some people call it a disorder, but as, a, as I've said, it's a disease that is caused by the body's immunity. Um, so the body immunity uh, is attacked. In other words, it's not really attacked, but it falls sick because every single part of our body falls sick. So the immunity uh, falls sick and it starts to attack healthy cells within the body, which is not the normal um, way that the immunity is supposed to act because the immunity is supposed to defend the body against uh, germs or bacteria that attack it. So with a person who has uh, SA lupus, instead the immunity, in addition to attacking uh, diseases, and germs, it attacks the healthy cells like the eyes, the heart, among other organs of the body. So that's what an autoimmune disease is. That's what lupus is. So the difference in lupus and other autoimmune diseases is that lupus is the extreme, it's a severe autoimmune disease that not only exists on its own, but exists with the presence of, with the presence of other autoimmune diseases. So that's why lupus goes on to attack multiple parts of the body. So lupus, in simple terms, is uh, an autoimmune disease that um, affects different parts of the body because the immunity of the patient is attacking all these different parts of the body. I hope uh, that explains the disease. Well, the causes... Yes. Mm -hmm. The causes, well, it's not yet known because not so much research has been done about lupus and other autoimmune, autoimmune diseases, but what we know is that... Um, the it's a genetic disorder that exists on the x chromosome so anybody who has the x chromosome can definitely get um lupus but so far that's where we are in terms of research <laughs> but the cause is not to be known hopefully in future we shall get there thank you uh, thank you very much thank you very much um uh, thank you mariam for coming back do you hear us now can you hear me mariam can you hear me Mariam, can you hear me? I can see you. Yes, I you were... got off back there. My network was not so good. Yeah, I'm I hearing you understand. now. I can get you. I, I do understand that I can say, possibly from where I'm viewing you from, you are having less light, so it is rather are, hard to see your you, face. Are you able to hear me now? I can see you, I can hear you very, very well, but I'm talking about the light where you are right now. Um, your face is not visible. The lighting in your room is not sufficient enough. But I can see you and I can hear you. So, yeah, now let us continue with... Uh, with you, Mariam, if you can hear me, uh, uh, Mr. Mpagi has briefly uh, shared with the viewers what lupus is and um, uh, the symptoms of lupus. And I'd like now you to address actually the symptoms of lupus as um, uh, a patient of this um, uh, disease. Uh, Mariam, if you hear me, may you please share with us your knowledge about lupus, especially the symptoms of lupus. We 
should look out for. Uh, Mariam is off, Mr. Mpagi. Mpagi, can you hear yes, me? I'm here. I'm here. I'm yes. Here. Yeah. Um. Uh, as we wait for Mariam, may you please take because I want us to have uh, this conversation as more of a learning session, more of an informative session than anything else. So, would you please um uh, help our viewers to get to know the basic symptoms of a person suffering from uh, lupus? Okay, um, maybe where I can start from is that with lupus, since there is not much research that has been done about it, uh, every patient has their own separate and different signs. However, maybe the signs, the signs that we do share as patients is that um, every patient with um, SA lupus at least has a sun allergy. So they need sunscreen to wear every single day in case they are. Um, out in the sun. The other important um, sign um, is um, the fact that they have different parts of their body hurting, for example, muscles. Okay, that's another huge sign. Um, uh, and then there is hair loss on someone's hair, head, because that's one's common, because once the sun hits someone's head, the hair starts to lose, starts to fall off. So in the end, they have like, it's like a bold part, bold part on their head, but in actual sense, it's hair loss, which is also um, a common sign for someone who has liver, a liver disease, okay? So the two are normally connected. Another common sign is the fact that the eyes are red um, and the eyes hurt or itch. Um, then the other signs like a dry mouth, and then there's what they call pleurisy, whereby somebody has difficult carrying things, or maybe when they are climbing a hill, they breathe so heavy, um, they are always tired, fatigue. I think those are the main signs that I can think of uh, right now, uh, in summary. But yes, those are the basic. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, the viewers would like to know, especially those uh, who are hearing about lupus for the first time. How is it different from um, cesticle cells? Because that's most popular. Yes, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, I think the huge difference between SA mm -hmm. lupus and sickle cells, that sickle cell, I'm not so much uh, experienced with sickle cell disease, but there is research about um, the sickle mm -hmm. cell disease. And at least we know that the doctors are treating uh, black patients with sickle cell, right? However, with lupus, uh, the challenge is that there is not so much research. So there is a huge difficulty. First of all, telling somebody that there is a black person who needs to wear sunscreen to be in the sun, yet they have uh, our black pigment, eh? it's tricky. Yeah, you know, the melamine. Treat me in the melamine, yeah. exactly. Um, the so melamine, people yeah, don't, yeah easily understand, they don't, con um, um, they don't understand that. So that's a huge challenge that somebody with SA lupus has to wear a sunscreen, regardless of the fact that they are black and you know, and, and mm. the huge, what's known about uh, the black color is that you know, you can stand in the sun, no matter how tough it is, be it in Egypt or any desert, you know, you can survive. Well, lupus makes it a challenge for someone to be in that, those kind of uh, conditions. Um, and then um, with, uh, lupus doctors do not recommend tests for black patients. That also makes it a challenge mm -hmm. because now you have very few patients, yet you have many people who are com complaining of these signs. So um, there is that lack of awareness amongst doctors. Um, and then it's really expensive. I don't know about uh, sickle cell as a disease in terms of accessing medication, accessing tests. With lupus, it's really mm -hmm. expensive. And um, uh, I think maybe what makes the two common is that um, both of them are chronic, okay? Mm. And, um, but, and of course, both of them are deadly uh, because both of them can actually kill if you don't receive treatment. Um, so there is equal, there is need for equal attention for both diseases and any other disease that has uh, a chronic effect to it in terms of patients. 
Um, there's a lot of research that is needed for SA lupus and therefore mm. uh, need for donors to actually put money into this disease and, and involve patients because patients are the ones that are going to help us really understand this disease uh, through the various tests that can be carried out. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Paji, for that explanation. I, I do wonder why is it that in Africa, uh, we don't generally know about lupus. I didn't know about it until when uh, Mariam addressed it to me uh, a few years ago. I didn't know it. So how come that basically there is little information about um, uh, lupus, yet it's very, very dangerous disease. I mean, it affects someone and destroys someone's life. How come we don't know about it? What, what's the cause? So it starts with the culture in Western countries. Now, mm -hmm. in the West, in their culture, they consider, especially the US, with this racism um, uh, inequality that's going on in, that, uh, in the US. So when mm -hmm. they are giving out funds for researchers to carry out um, research on uh, SOA lupus and other autoimmune diseases, um, mm -hmm. they normally give uh, these funds to white researchers. Now, in the US, and the Western Europe, amongst other Western countries, what is known amongst black, or what's known about black communities is that once you go there, you're going to face a challenge of violence. So most researchers do not go into these black communities. In fact, if a mm -hmm. black person goes into uh, a white person estate, normally the white people complain, or they used to complain because the value of the estate goes down. It's, it's like the culture in the United States. And so because black patients are not involved in research, you have all this research that comes out. In fact, if you were to go out um, and you do a simple research on Google about lupus, you'll see white people pictures, okay? That shows that the research is really focused on white people. Now, when the research yeah. comes out like that, in the end, what happens is that um, the people who are reading it, including doctors amongst uh, donors, they think the disease is mainly affecting white people. Mm. Um, and then when it mainly affects white people, again, the finding further goes back to white researchers, white patients. So the disease mm. is looked at mm. as a white disease. Mm. Um, and in the end, what happens is that it makes it rare because if you're focusing on mainly white people, the disease becomes rare um, mm. because there are, not, there are not more other patients who are considered. And yet it's mm. statistically a fact that SA lupus exists mainly amongst black people. Now you see that challenge. The disease exists yes, amongst I... many black people, yet we are mm -hmm. focusing on white people who are few, so it becomes a rare disease. Mm -hmm. So you realize that now we have so many African patients, okay? And yet in the US, what they are struggling with is to include black patients in this research uh, that is being carried out. Um, yet the funds are still focusing on white people. So the disease in the US, um, becomes very rare amongst black people in the United States. But now you can imagine how rare it is on the African continent. Because even a doctor, when I, when I was um, being, before I was diagnosed at Mengo, the doctor literally told me, ah, no, don't worry about those diseases. They only exist amongst white people. So to seek my diagnosis, I had to go to Kenya. That's where I got my diagnosis. Because in Uganda, you can't. The doctors know it's a white disease, not only in Uganda, but also uh, in the United States and Europe. So these doctors also go to Europe and USA, and that's the knowledge they get, and that's the knowledge they bring back, and that's why I was taught like that. So what I'm explaining was actually research that was done by the rheumatology department in the United States, where they actually confirmed that this, uh, the existence of uh, racial and ethnic disparities or inequalities with uh, SA lupus and other autoimmune diseases, because white doctors are afraid to go to black communities that they assume have um, um, violence within them. That if a white person goes to a black community, what they expect is to be attacked. So the researchers stay away from black communities, which leads to all this white evidence piling up about the disease. So the doctor has not read about the disease because they don't expect it to exist amongst black people. Even the black patient won't read unless that stubborn patient, okay? like the patient that you're seeing right now, <laughs> you know? Mm. So, um, it's a huge struggle for black patients to actually come out and explain it because there is so much attack that comes against them from doctors, you know, from all those people that 
uh, do not see it as a blood disease. So I thank you for this show because at least I get to explain this. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, thank you so That's much. And I think this is very important. Mm. Thank you so much, Mpagi. I think this is very important for all our viewers across the world because uh, many of our viewers are not in Africa. I uh, would like them to know from the source, from the people in Africa having the same um, uh, challenge. Um, in the UK, I've had uh, to know a few people having lupus um, in the last uh, one year. So um, it, now it, it, it didn't come as a surprise because I knew uh, Mariam back in Uganda and a few people, but I was just wondering why it had taken me so many years without knowing about lupus. I have a child, uh, my firstborn is diabetic, who was born diabetic. It's now 18 years, he has been diabetic all his life. So when I discovered about lupus um, and I knew it from Mariam and how she was struggling, I was really touched because I had thought there were worse diseases and I didn't know about uh, lupus. So that's why I picked interest uh, in it. And I think for our viewers, it's very important to get this information out. And thank you so much for talking about the uh, racial uh, uh, implications, the biases the systematic racism uh, in handling the diseases. There's much that is hidden uh, because people look at color than looking at people how they are suffering these kind of challenges. And I'm sorry we have gone through all that. Now, I would like to know, and our viewers would like to know, um, how does one get lupus? Uh, first, let me say, um, um, mm. I, feel, I feel sorry um, for your child who has had diabetes for all that time. Um, as a person who has a chronic disease, I do understand the challenges that someone mm -hmm. can actually go through. Yes. But thank you for sharing that. Um, but maybe what I could first ask is, um, uh, in, in the UK, the people that you know, know who have SA lupus, how many of them what color are they? Are they white? Actually, give me like a ratio so I can understand. No, no, the few people I know, in fact, there are only two people I know. <laughs> Interesting, there are only two people I know have just got to know them online because they're talking about it and they are white. Only two people who I just saw online talking about um, having a lupus and they are white. Okay. And um, it, 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 it was something which I got to know before the show that, okay, it's a disease that is affecting all other people, but it's given less and less attention. Exactly, you know, so you've mm -hmm. realized that um, you will find it, uh, you, you find it existing amongst more white people than black people, mm -hmm. yet uh, you're mm -hmm. in a continent where you have so many black people around you, you know, yeah. Uh, but you have to first travel to actually get to know about lupus. In fact, even me, before um, I was diagnosed, I, I didn't know that lupus existed. In fact, if somebody told me that a black person had to wear sunscreen, I wouldn't mm. believe it because of the disease. And then after being diagnosed, here I was joining a group, uh, again, thanks to Mariam, where we have all these patients with lupus. There's, there's actually another group for, that was created by Aga Khan um, Hospital where you get to meet uh, not only people with lupus, but other people with other autoimmune diseases. So we need to redo really a lot of awareness about the disease. Um, so you have you asked me about the causes. Unfortunately, yeah, I don't the causes. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the cause, based on a research that was carried out in the UK, um, it's, called, it's looked as, at the moment, the current, the most recent research suggests that it's a genetic disorder, okay? that uh, occurs on the X chromosome of a person. So the beauty about this is that when they say X chromosome, it means that any person can have it regardless of color. So that's the first evidence we have that suggests that any person of color can actually get a lupus. So because of this genetic disorder, um, um, the disease um, actually occurs on uh, the X chromosome. That's why the whole problem starts. And it's most common amongst women because women have two X chromosomes. Well, a man has yeah. just one X chromosome. Mm -hmm. So you have many women with the disease. 
So it's a genetic disorder, that's where we are. However, um, before that research, there were other theories that were um, that existed that maybe it's caused by the environment. But now uh, mm -hmm. we are beyond that kind of thinking because we have white patients with SL lupus, also have black patients on different continents. So it can't be an environmental mm -hmm. problem. Um, um, I think, yeah, basically right now, what I can say is that it's a genetic disorder. That's where we are in terms of research. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my friend in America, Amber uh, Dawn Bain Anderson, just sent a message on the screen, which you can see, as uh, she said, that her mother, her white mother had lupus. So you can see. Uh, 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 and it's a disease which is widespread, but with little information going out. Um, thank you very much for that explanation. And uh, thank you very much, Amber, for following the discussion. Um, we have uh, Lady Mariam on set. I can see you, and I do believe everyone can see you everywhere in the world. I would like to take you on now. Uh, Mpaji has been explaining quite a lot of stuff. I talked about the disease, the causes, the symptoms. Now, I, I would like to you, uh, Mariam, to give us your personal, let me call it a testimony, about the disease. How has it treated you? Um, what are the challenges of uh, being um, a, a patient of lupus? in Africa, your own experience? Uh, well, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Pato. Uh, unfortunately, I was a bit off with uh, when we were starting my device gave me issues, but um, I have mm. uh, had lupus, I think, diagnosed nine years, but I think I've had it longer than that, about 13 to 14 years, because there was a gap before I was diagnosed, and uh, it has not been easy. Lupus changes your life in ways you do not even expect because it takes its toll on you physically, mentally, and financially. Now, mm -hmm. it is not it is not an easy journey, especially if you do not have support. Luckily for me, I have had support, but I know so many other people who do not have support because one, I'm sure as uh, Mr. Ampaj was saying, we do we yeah. are not aware. People do not know. So you are in the before diagnosis, especially, you are dealing with something that you do not understand. You do not have a concrete line of treatment. Uh, you generally you are just grasping at, at straws and anything that can work for you at this point definitely goes, but you are not sure how it, it is working. And then it comes, uh, then there is a point that uh, you are not able to manage yourself, especially financially. Mm -hmm. uh, the lupus, is, um, it is not, it is invisible. You cannot see the struggles that you go through. They are not visible. You look at me and you think, ah, she's healthy, she's okay. I am going around my work, but with a lot of difficulty that I'm not going to be able to explain to you. And you will not definitely understand because you can see. It, it is different for a person who is maybe limb, doesn't have a limb, or is in a wheelchair or stuff like that, it makes it a little mm -hmm. bit more understandable and they get a little bit more sympathy compared to mm -hmm. you who look wholesome, but you're not okay. So you find yourself mm -hmm. having to defend your inabilities because we cannot see them and you're not going to blame people because there is no knowledge out there. So personally for me, my journey has been long. I have scars to show for the fight I've had with lupus. But luckily for me, I had people who are willing to help. And I have gone out of my comfort zone and I have looked for answers. Mr. Gugusa gets tired, of course. And um, the other problem is we do not have enough qualified personnel to deal with this kind of thing. Uh, you find that even in Uganda alone, the number of rheumatologists that we have is not enough to cover everyone. And if you cannot afford private uh, consultation, you will find that you will not get the best care. I'm sure I have, as I was coming in, I had uh, Derek talking about how mm -hmm. he had to go to Aga Khan, to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. This is not cheap. It is a very expensive procedure. The, the, the meetings are expensive. In most cases, it's even online. I'm sure Derek has been having them online. You're not having a physical uh, interaction with someone. 
So there are very many challenges. And our public hospitals, they, they, they are not aware. You go to, uh, an, uh, to, to a clinic or to a hospital and, some, and you say, I am a lupus patient, because this is what I always say when I have a crisis. The first thing I tell them is, and everybody will ask me what is that. They do not know. They mm -hmm. have no idea what they are dealing with. So if you do not have a specialist on ground who has some kind of background knowledge, then you're going to have a, a, a big problem because your treatment is not well known. And some of them, are, since we don't know, they think it is contagious. I had a very interesting uh, event when I was, uh, I had a flare, unfortunately. I got discoid lupus, that is lupus with a or of the skin. And one of the attending nurses was afraid to come next to me because it, it didn't wow. make sense. Like, how can you be sick? Generally, if you have not had of it before, it does not make sense. And uh, if, uh, since it is also affected most people, uh, we find that most people living with lupus, they are not able to have family. Some of them, majority of them, many colleagues have tried to conceive, and maybe you can conceive, but you cannot maintain a pregnancy, or you go through the first trimester, second trimester, you lose it, maybe because you are attacking the pregnancy, because you think it is, a, it is a disease. So generally, there are so many other underlying uh, factors when it comes to uh, reproductive health. When it comes to mental health, you can imagine you're a married mm -hmm. woman in your, like, if you get lupus at about 20, maybe you want to have a family. How are you going to manage to carry a pregnancy term when you cannot, you, you don't even understand how your body system is working or is going to perceive it? So the, mm -hmm. the challenges are, are cut more across social and economic usually, but uh, most of this, the, most of the lupus struggles they are not visible. Most of them are, are very invisible. So that is where the biggest challenge comes in. And most of us do not know how to, we don't know where to go for help, first of all. And even if you are open to go to getting the help, the resources that are there, if you do not have money, that means you're not going to get a better service for yourself. So our healthcare in, uh, in the, especially in Uganda, is not, it does not cater for people like us who, who have high medical bills in the public hospitals. And yet, sorry. So those are the biggest challenges that I think we are having. Wow, thank you for that explanation, Mariam. It is saddening, it is very challenging, and I've known how you have been struggling with it. You have said that you got to know about it about 13 years ago, if I got you uh, correctly. I, I have had, uh, in my estimate, I have had lupus for about 13 years, but I was diagnosed about eight, nine years ago. So that means there was yes. a lapse of about four to five years before I knew what was wrong. Now, uh, from what um, Paggy said, um, uh, it is genetic? Mm -hmm. It is believed uh, to be, to an extent, by, genetic, and then triggered by G. Uh, um, that the can you hear me? The yes, I can hear you. Yes, I would like to know, um, um, because from your explanation, it appears you didn't know about it when you were growing up, um, and and. Um, can you hear me? Ampaji, can you hear me? I can see you. Oh, yes. Yes, I can hear you clearly. Yes, maybe there are network interruptions. I'll go straight to you asking this question. Uh, you talked about the genetic part of it. Uh, genetically, people get uh, lupus. And I, I would like to know, how can someone uh, get it when they are old? Because um, uh, back to Mariam, to finish that, then I'll go back to Mpagi. Uh, Mariam talks about uh, getting to realize that we have lupus when we have grown up. Does it mean that someone can get it when they are old or they have it from birth? Um, there is a, a condition which is uh, called neonatal lupus, which happens, which occurs in mm -hmm. children. 
but uh, most mm. people that I are, are having uh, lupus right now, like the ones, the, the majority of the people who have lupus, it, uh, it comes in at, at, at the age of about 15 when you're in your teen, like reproductive, uh, around your reproductive age, up to about 45. That is the, the, area, the, the age bracket where, at least in most studies, where lupus has not been known to be to manifest, but although they are children who are also diagnosed with lupus, and in that case, it is called neonatal lupus. So it can happen mm -hmm. that it's a baby and they also get it, but the cases are not as common as the adults. So can someone say, those who are not medically very versatile, that lupus is within your system lying there until when it matures, maybe in your teenager um, uh, years. Can we take it like that? I think you are um, with it, when we look you grow with it. it. Mm. Yes, uh, since there is also a genetic background, I think it is there mm. somewhere lying dormant until something mm. triggers it. That is what I think. Because even in okay. the studies, it shows that it could be in the environment, or it could be in your hormones, it could be a drug-induced uh, reaction, or a viral-induced reaction. It could be anything in uh, in your surroundings that could trigger it. So the causes, as I think Mpaji said, are not very clear. But what is clear is that initially, in your genes somewhere, it is there lying dormant and waiting for something to trigger it. Thank you very much. I'll go back to Mpagi. Uh, Mr. Mpagi, back to you for an explanation. Can you hear me, Mpagi? Mpagi, yes, I, I can, can see you. you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. We, we want to give uh, a backup from where uh, Mariam has stopped. Uh, the triggers. You got lupus. How did you get to know you have lupus? What are the triggers in your expression of uh, getting lupus, uh, Mr. Mpagi? Okay, um, I think I'll, I'll also talk about the challenges, uh, if you give me time. Mm. Um, I, will, I shall go back to that, but the triggers first, then the challenges in your own experience also. Mm. Okay, um, mm. so the triggers, uh, it's difficult to know uh, what triggered it, but what I can say is that when I was 15 years old, that's when mm. I first experienced my challenges with lupus. Um, but with the, the age 15 is tricky because then there's another autoimmune disease called juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, which I was also diagnosed with, and it also starts at 15. And the big, the big signs about juvenile rheumatoid arthritis is that you have um, challenges with your height. You, so you, have, you, you lose weight, height because uh, it, it attacks the, uh, the backbone. But mm -hmm. with it, um, I was also experiencing all these signs of SA lupus, for example, like the eyes that were itching, you know, um, having challenges with the sun because you find it to be extremely hot and makes you weak and, you know, um, have fatigue. But all of these things happened at 15. But because the doctors at that time were diagnosing it as ulcers, you know, in my case, it was either ulcers or malaria because the experience is not really uh, good. So uh, my diagnosis took so long that in the end I was diagnosed when I was 32 years old. So you can see the difference, you know, like that's 15 yeah. years later. Mm. Because in between you're being diagnosed with malaria, you know, those things that by they say, I told you, you're, you're Muganda, you know, when they say, um, and they give you panic. Yeah, yes, you know? yes. Yeah, <laughs> malaria, <laughs> exactly. Mm, 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 so mm, they say, give you Panadol, mm. ulcers, mm. you have these ulcers that don't heal. So at 32, that's when I was diagnosed. So it's not, it's not easy for me to explain it at the time when I was 15. I only share uh, their memories. I only, I only share pain that I had at that time, joint uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the back. Um, so um, it's difficult to know what triggered it, but I know that at 15 uh, or at it's the younger age of any child, they can actually share these signs and people should be aware and know that the disease can actually exist amongst um, children. You asked about old people uh, because there is no research even for an old person, it's possible. The most important thing is to have doctors recommending tests. But the challenge with an old person is that they are, they are, they are weak, not weak, but they, they, their body is not as strong as that of a young person. So the, the signs they complain of are a little bit more than a, a young person maybe. So it's difficult at that time to really know if it's possible. And if it's possible, the person in question who's a patient, the old person, actually have to do a lot of tests to be diagnosed 
which most most um, grandparents would not want to endure or go through. Um, uh, for example, like my grandmother complains of almost the same signs, but because it requires taking medication, doing out of tests, in the end she questions and says, why should I suffer so much? After all, I am old. And as you know, as the Baganda, we normally connect or associate things with that we don't know with ancestral, you know, ghosts and things are attacking us and things like that. Yeah, so that's the challenge. Thank you. So it, it, it means there are many people out there who have lupus without knowing. In, from what I'm learning from both of you. Um, uh, back to you, Paggy, before I go to Mariam. Uh, Paggy, what is your experience, personal experience uh, having lupus? Uh, briefly, how has it affected you? Oh, so the, um, I think for me, it's, you know, at mm -hmm. first I actually thought that um, I also, I believed in those ancestral things that maybe I had something ancestral that was attacking me, you know, that was making me mm -hmm. weak because every single doctor I went to did not really know what was causing it. So if you have no answers, the thing you try to do is try to explain it in the best way you can. Okay, so sometimes you go to these blood doctors, I don't know if you've heard of them, and they tell you hunter, I don't know, mm -hmm. those other things. But in reality, it's, it's, um, it's a disease, and you're, you're, tr you're trying out different diets to solve something that requires medication. So that's a huge challenge, knowing where to get your answer. I was actually also recommended to go to a psychiatrist called Professor Mr. Sagani, and he diagnosed me with obsessive compulsive disorder. Just made it up, gave me drugs and, you know, in the end, he was just exploiting me, and these things are happening. So you have patients being exploited by doctors who are giving it's them true. drugs for ulcers, giving them drugs for anything that they can think of, because at this point, everyone is guessing. So the psychiatrist is also giving you medication and is telling you you have a mental illness that, that, that is making you have joint pain, have, making you lose hair, because you're desperate. And so everyone sees it as an opportunity to exploit a patient. But, you know... It um, is true. So, so we need to carry out awareness so people know that, you know, you don't have to go to a pastor to receive treatment. Mm. You know, there's actually, you can do tests and receive the actual treatment that you deserve. So those are the challenges many patients go through. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Uh, Miss Diagnosis, uh, yesterday I was reading a report from the U.S. about how many people die in the U.S. because of being misdiagnosed by doctors so that they can be able to get money out of them. This is the US. The report was on the US. And all the million people get drugs, get treatment for diseases they don't actually suffer from. But because a doctor is looking for something to attribute to you to continue getting this medication. So the big pharma, in a way, has become a problem. Now, if it is a problem in the US where people go and get misdiagnosed, put on a wrong kind of diagnosis, given wrong medication. How about in Africa? How about in Uganda? As Mariam said, and as you have said, you go to hospital, they say, we don't see the disease because they are checking for malaria, they are checking for HIV, they are checking for the basic common ailments. And if they're not there, they're going to say, it seems we have been bewitched if they are going to go traditional, or the doctor is going to find an excuse and attribute a disease to you. So my question is uh, to um, you first, and Paggy, before I go to Mariam, uh, uh, are we now having specialists in Uganda that are able to diagnose uh, lupus patients directly without going to Kenya? In my experience, at the moment, we don't have, okay? Um, because... You know, to diagnose a patient with lupus, there are certain tests you have to do. However, um, the doctor that I went to, at least a rheumatologist, the tests he carried out were, yes, they were not conclusive in other words. So, but it was more like a starting point. So he was supposed to ask for more tests. He didn't. But immediately he gave me medication for lupus, okay, and um, arthritis, actually. But then it later on turned out, because I continued having the pain, that what I had was actually more extreme than what he had actually diagnosed. And that's why I went to uh, Kenya and uh, Aga Khan Hospital to seek for a uh, better diagnosis. So what I needed, if he had carried out more tests like the, the doctors at Aga Khan, um, I needed stronger drugs. And those are the ones that I'm taking right now, Megadrexate. But if it was any other patient that had relied on mm -hmm. the diagnosis that the doctor had given, most likely 
they wouldn't be here. In other words, I wouldn't be here because I would have continued suffering. And who knows, maybe I would have had another autoimmune disease within my body because the medication wasn't suited for me. Again, it may seem like the diagnosis was right, but that was also another misdiagnosis because the tests that were uh, recommended were not enough. So we have many patients in Uganda who are also being diagnosed in that sense or that way. And in the end, they continue suffering with pain and their conditions simply get worse and worse and worse, which also brings us to more challenges uh, and the need for maybe like a support group where we can talk to people and refer them to good doctors who can actually treat them. So those are um, the problems that we have. In now that's a big challenge. That's a very big challenge. Thank you so much, Mpagi. Uh, Mariam, in your own experience, where did you go for the diagnosis? Who told you you had lupus? How did you get to know about about it? Um, uh, I I have a friend. Uh, actually, a, a friend. I would say a sister. She because she knew what I was going through, and she was in the medical field. So she recommend, she was asking around, and then we got what wind of uh, Dr. Kat Mark, who currently mm -hmm. is uh, doing the, he's uh, the dean of uh, medical school. And uh, when he looked at me, he took one look at me and said, Mariam, I think you have lupus. I, I hope if you it comes out positive, it will give it will, it, it is a good it, it, it will put it will point in a, the right direction. I think it will be good news. So I, what, what is lupus? He told me, go to, he, he, he gave me a couple of tests that I was supposed to do. And at that time, I think they cost about my bill at a Victoria University by then came to about 980,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. And uh, for a lay person, that is a lot of money. But of course, my father called coughed up the money and I did that. Uh, but um, wh when we go back to the question of specialists, mm -hmm. the truth is even if they, uh, we do okay, have rheumatologists in Uganda, they are not, I don't know, they are not very much invested in uh, lupus. Most of them tend towards rheumatoid arthritis because I don't know, I think maybe there are a bit more people with that disease. And it is a bit easier to diagnose because the signs and symptoms maybe might be a bit more visible. So there is very little knowledge about what to do. And then when it comes down to most of us cannot afford private uh, mm -hmm. hospitals. Of course, in Uganda, if you have money and you can access a private uh, physician, you are going to get better service. Now, we have clinics in Molago with Dr. Karsam uh, every week. Mm. Yes, Mariam, you are breaking a little. Can you hear me? Mariam, Mpagi, can you hear me? Mpagi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, Mariam has challenges. I do agree there are challenges in connection. Uh, viewers, please um, uh, bear with us. We have challenges with connection. Now, uh, I will go back to you, Mpagi. Uh, um, I see that the challenge of lupus is quite enormous in Uganda, especially because of um, testing and all that. And you did say in the introduction that it is a genetic um, kind of disease. You have also mentioned about your grandmother having it, if I do remember. Now, um, what would be your advice uh, to uh, people uh, planning to have, sorry, can you hear me? What, uh, like if Mariam talked about um, having children, uh, how about children? Uh, you, if if you intend to have oh, yes, children, yes, yes. Uh, uh, yes. If you intend to have children, what would be the advice for people who would like to have children and they have lupus? What could be the the, the advice to these young people who want to uh, to get children and they have lupus?
Mpaji, did you hear me? Mpaji, did you hear me? Yes, Mpaji. Um, I'm having, uh, Mariam, you are back. Mariam, yes, can you hear I'm me? Back. Sorry about that. Yes, no, I can don't hear need you. To, you don't need to apologize for the network. It's a problem everywhere. My colleague in South oh. Africa couldn't make it because of the network. It's, I think, it's a global mm. problem. Uh, the yeah. viewers will bear with us. We have a global challenge with our network. Even where I am right now, sometimes the network goes off. Sometimes the network goes off. Now, uh, Mariam, you were a parent that I know, and I know I've been struggling as a parent to um, uh, have children. I do appreciate that. I'd like to know, uh, does lupus affect children? Like your mother, you know, has it affected your children? Um, when you say affected my children, uh, would you like to mean like, do they have the condition? Have I confirmed? Yes. Or... Medically, that's the right word to ask the question. Have you transferred okay. it to the children? Is it transferable? Um, since it is genetic, and of mm. course, part of my genes they carry. Uh, when mm. I had my, my firstborn, my girl, she's now six, she'll be seven in September. I tested her immediately because I knew lupus is more rampant in girl, in women than in, in the females mm. than in the males. And it came out that she was okay. The boy, mm. I have not yet uh, tested him. He's just two, he's making three in May. But I am planning on taking that course because I want to know just in case anything, any eventualities, so that I am aware and I'm prepared. But of course, there are chances that you mm. carry the disease from, because in my own family, we have another person who's living with lupus right now. It's, uh, it was, and when I looked at them, somehow, because I had the knowledge, just look, I took one look at her and I knew, I, I, everything in me was telling me, this is lupus. And of course, when she did the test, it came out positive. Now, it was easier for her because I had already gone through the same. So you see how it covers the gap very quickly. She didn't even have to suffer for her yet. Because when I saw her, I knew immediately. So yes, lupus has affected my children in a way that I am known as uh, productive or as very readily available to them as I would like to be. Mm. Now, I have a toddler. As you know, toddlers, are, they are energetic and they need a lot of time. Sometimes I find that I cannot give my boy that much because my energy levels are not that good. So we can only do the small activities that do not require too much energy. But as a child, they need to play. They need to, they need a lot of energy. So to an extent, yes, it takes away from them. And of course I take away from them financially because a big chunk of our finances goes to taking care of mommy's medical bills. So of course, definitely, yes, it does take away from them in one way or another. Even if it does not, it might not affect them maybe uh, personal, like on a on a personal level, like medically or health wise. But to a very big extent, yes, it does take away. From them. Thank you very much, and that is um, that is very painful for everyone uh, involved in the family. So it takes people to be very patient, very accommodative, very understanding uh, to have a mother was lupus, the father was lupus. And I know you have gone through quite a lot. I do appreciate that. Now, going away from that, um, uh, now I would like to go to the way forward part of it. Um, uh, but before you go to that, do you have an idea of how prevalent it is uh, in Uganda? How much comments getting to know lupus um, uh, patients in Uganda, the prevalence of lupus in East Africa. Do you have any idea about statistics about lupus in East Africa or in Uganda in particular? Like how many people are getting to know they are having lupus in our country so far? The numbers, um, I, any ideas? I think uh, from my point of view, the numbers mm. might be high. But since uh, as we are talking about it, like we do not have enough mm. the the knowledge of lupus, even among health workers. Let's look at maybe a health center two, three, where I might go to for help initially. They they do they they have no knowledge. 
as uh, Derek was saying, they'll tell you how malaria, maybe typhoid, it's an infection. So it is very possible that there are very many people out there who have lupus, but they are not diagnosed. And maybe mm -hmm. they will not be diagnosed because even access to a specialist who will point them in the right direction, the possibilities are very, very few. Because even in the city center, at least uh, I would say middle class income people, um, if you are not, if they, they will give you the test fine, but even the money to, the finances to go and do this test, you do not have. So they tell you to do a test and it might take you about two, three months. Now, if it, if it is affecting maybe your kid, your liver, it's affecting a, a serious body organ. By the time you figure it out, in most cases, maybe it is a bit too late or there is a bit of damage that has been done. So they are, the, the, ch the, the numbers, the figures, I am not going to say that there is a high or low, but the problem mm. is we even do not have yeah. the opportunity to find out if we mm. have this or the other. So that is a very, very difficult question to answer. And I can yeah. clearly tell you, I have no idea. Thank you. It I was a hard no question because yeah. I do appreciate that it was a hard question because, of course, you did say that even our testing is very hard, very expensive. I do appreciate that. Now, um, uh, medically, uh, from what um, Paggy and we have said, uh, I would say that it would take one parent to um, genetically transfer it to uh, the child. Is that the fact? Unlike, unlike, unlike sickle cell, which takes two uh, to be transferred, I think with the lupus, it takes only one person to transfer it to the child. If that makes sense, does it? Is it a fact that stands? You get what I'm um, saying? Yes, I get what you're saying. Yeah. It doesn't I need to have so. a father and mother to have a lupus um, transferred to the child. It only takes one parent. Yes, I think I do believe you're correct. It, it would only take one, page, uh, one parent uh, to, to transfer the condition. Yeah, I think you might be right there. Yeah. Um, Paji, what's your view? I'm not a doctor. I'm just talking from a social scientist point of view and for our viewers to understand because there's something I want to pass on on how we could be able to create this kind of awareness and how we can be able to distinguish between lupus, sickle cell, and other autoimmune uh, disease. And Paggy, what's your view on that? Okay, I think uh, the first thing that we have to do is to ensure that people should not get worried. The disease is yeah. not contagious. And mm. it's because it's rare, it's not something that's going to be passed on to your children. Because remember, it's rare at the moment, based on the mm. stuff that we mm. have. So chances of your children having the disease are very slim. However, um, you should be on the lookout for the disease because it's still passed on um, through uh, our heritage, like um, to our children, it's possible. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, if you're not married to somebody who has SA lupus, don't get too comfortable because also all of us, um, we come from families where the disease did not exist. So sometimes the genetic change could actually happen uh, to you, okay? So that's how the disease is not really yes, but it's carried on with the family. However, even people who are not um, who are not related to the disease, who have no relative with the disease, can also get it. So be on the lookout for the signs. So you need to know. And then please go ahead, have your children. Don't be worried. You know, yeah, have a fest, as they say. In the and yes, then someone um, if you have me, someone yes. who has SA lupus. Mm -hmm. If you have somebody who has, uh, if you're married, someone who has mm -hmm. SL lupus or know somebody who has SL lupus, please join a support group so that um, you get to know um, of how to support that person, how to be with them and understand what they're going through. Then also recommend them to a support group. In fact, I have a friend who's a lawyer. He's the one who told me about the Gagan group of uh, people with autoimmune diseases. If I didn't, if that person did not recommend me to the person who was looking for patients like me, I wouldn't have joined. Um, actually, Mariam is also doing it right now. Um, she created a support group of people with SL lupus. So, you know, she's a go-to person so that you can actually get to know about the disease um, through your friends, okay? So it's not something that should worry people, but it's something that we should just simply understand and know what to do about it and how to help people who have the disease, yeah. 
Yes, thank you so much. And Paggy, back to you briefly. Um, what are these external factors, if I can put it that way, that can lead to uh, people getting lupus? If you have done some bit of research in that, let us know. What are these external factors? Other factors, you talked about environment. Are there other specific factors people should look out for um, that can cause uh, lupus? Medication, what are those other factors in your view? Okay, the biggest challenge with lupus is that there is no research. It's also the same challenge mm. with autoimmune diseases, okay? That is the biggest challenge. And the main cause of that is because all these funds that are going into research, white researchers, white organizations. So to address that question, we need funders to start sending money to researchers on the African continent so that we can have a diverse understanding of the disease from both white researchers, black researchers, because you know that's the only way we can get an answer to that. Because right now, the answer I have as a cause for the disease, it's still going to be based on research that's coming from um, white institutions, which is genetic mm -hmm. cause or maybe environment. So we are stuck there, but we are stuck there because there's this discrimination gap that mm -hmm. not every single researcher is involved. And if we go through our history, we know that um, very many amazing innovations have been done by black people. So we just need to involve more black people, need to involve more patients, mm -hmm. we need funding for this disease. That's, that's where the, all the answers are. And donors need to know that they have a huge part to play. Without their support, we are going to just have many questions regarding this disease. Okay? Yes, that's, that's what I can say about, about that. We really need funding. Thank you very much. Anna, we have a call 30 minutes, but we are going to use these 30 minutes uh, equitably and fairly uh, to talk about the way forward. But before we do that, we'd like to know more about your organizations. Uh, which you lead, who, who, what they are doing, um, and then we shall go into the needs, and then we shall uh, do some uh, a call for support, having known where the gaps are. So I, I will start with uh, uh, you, Pagi. Um, uh, may you please uh, tell the viewers about the organization that you lead, uh, what it does. Of course, we start with the background, why the organization what are you doing at the moment? Uh, what are the challenges? People would like to know about your organization for start. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kato. Um, so our organization is called Mind Foundation and we strengthen our world peace, human rights and sustainable development. So as a patient, we all know that a patient needs to live a life that is peaceful, okay? And that's where we actually involve or bring in this work on um, SA Lupus. Uh, beyond just having a peaceful um, life, they also need to have a healthy life. So what we are doing um, to support people with SL lupus is that we're already working with patients with SL lupus who are helping us collect some funds so we can buy sunscreen for people who have this disease that they can wear to avoid um, the disease being aggravated by the sun. So we're also trying to raise awareness about the disease through the different networks that we have, like the Bosch Alumni Network. And... Um, um, we also carry out community projects where um, young people can raise or hold their leaders to account through music, dance, and drama. So such an activity can really help to boost awareness about SA lupus if we can take it to the village level and actually make people understand that the disease is real and exists amongst Black people. So these are some of the things that we are doing um, to raise awareness about the disease, but we're mainly focusing on the village level online platforms and then probably as we scale we can also have in-person support meetings for the patients to share their signs so that we can also understand the disease given the limited research that exists um, within the country of course there's also need for a press release and that's our next target right now at a national level so funding for a press release would really take it take us to uh, a whole new level thank you i think that's where we are yeah, thank you very much for that information. Now, uh, Lady Mariam, I uh, would like to know from you, uh, I do know that you are the ED for Lupus Initiative Uganda, um, and of course you have people just like Impagi that you take care of. Uh, the viewers would like to know more about your organization, background, what you do, and then the challenges you do face in doing your work in Africa. Hey, 
initiative Mariam, we are waiting. Of yes. course, uh, we... Yes, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, at uh, Lupus Initiative, mm -hmm. Uganda, we, mm -hmm. we, we are bringing together people, of course, living with a uh, systemic lupus. And uh, we, it, we, we serve as um, a, so, a, a psychosocial support where, as uh, Derek was saying, we, we share experiences because even if you will not find any two patients living with lupus having the same symptoms or going through the same, uh, the, the disease affecting them in the same way, which you could say is maybe common for other, with other conditions. Mm. So um, with uh, at, uh, at Lupino, at Lupus Initiative, we offer psychosocial support and uh, of late we've been working with uh, Mr. Ampaji. Uh, he has come in to help us with uh, uh, providing sunscreen because even uh, some of the, we don't know how to live with a condition. Uh, with a condition, mm -hmm. uh, we think people think that if I am wearing a sunscreen, um, mm -hmm. how can I say it? in Uganda, Malala, it's a, a sunscreen mm -hmm. is for the it's for the pride, white, white uh, pride. It's for the it's for the white man. How can mm -hmm. a black person be asking for sunscreen? Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, mm. of course, uh, with uh, with uh, with exposure, and I, I I have Derek to thank for it because he has really championed the uh, sunscreen uh, bit mm. for, for uh, with sunblock. So, and of course, right now what we are doing is that uh, basically supporting each other psychologically and uh, trying to fit in, sharing our experiences. Uh, we do not have partners. And of course, if you're to run a successful organization, you need partners. They might help you in kind. They might help you with a, with a contribution. They might stand with you in terms of support, maybe. It could be financial. It could be in kind. We do not have partners yet because, as you can see, uh, look, there aren't very many people. We, we think there aren't. Or right now, we don't have so many people living with us. But... The condition is there, and uh, it needs to be addressed. So you find the challenge that is uh, in most cases, even if we do have an emergency in the in the group, mm -hmm. we are turning to fellow patients to support another patient. But you can imagine how hard that is in this economic uh, situation that we have right now. Checking out whether little you have for yourself and giving it to somebody else might be a bit of a challenge. But if we had uh, partners who can help us maybe provide a sunscreen, provide a lip balm, probably even on medication because the treatment is uh, quite expensive. There are tests that must be done at least on a regular basis, maybe for the kidney function, uh, kidney liver functions, uh, cardio tests, and these um, maybe x rays and uh, whatnot, blood work. And this is all expensive. This is all money. So the biggest challenge we are having is that we do not have partners to support us. The only people we are backing on to support us are our families right now. And as a group, maybe if you have a problem, we say, okay, let's stand with Mariam, let's stand with Derek, so that they can go through a crisis. But remember, you're taking away from the people who also need the what? The support. That's very important to note. Thank you so much for that information, uh, Mariam. That is um, very helpful. Um, ladies and gentlemen, our viewers, wherever you are, we are um, um, calling for support. You could, you can see, you can able to see a fundraiser uh, going on the screen. Um, the Lupus Initiative Uganda is calling for support because they do need it. We don't have the support from the government of Uganda, and we do rely on people of goodwill to help these people uh, get on managing uh, this disease. Uh, Mary, as we see the screen and we encourage people to uh, support the initiative, um, what areas do you specifically want to be assisted as um, uh, lupus patients in Uganda? specifically which areas and uh, what efforts have you uh, put in to uh, get government on your side? Have they helped in any way? Um, 
In as far as government uh, support goes, we have had a few talks with the Ministry of Health. Uh, we had a chance to meet with uh, Dr. Olaro. And uh, unfortunately, we haven't really gone that far because by the time we went to him, there, were, there had been the COVID crisis. And uh, unfortunately, hydroxychloroquine was uh, hoarded. I, I don't know whether I should say it was hoarded yes. or... But the yes. government acquired it in quite large quantities. And we went, we wanted to ask, we, we were asking that if they could, because, and then later we found out that it wasn't going to help people with COVID. So we wanted, we were requesting if we could get the medicines, but somehow it, it never came through. So unfortunately, um, the Ugandan government has not done, has not done much to assist us. The, the only kind of assistance that we are getting right now, which I could call maybe government, is the clinics that we have in uh, Chirudu. Mm and uh, and mulago with uh, dr kadu but these clinics are mixed with people living with hyper, uh, uh, high blood pressure and diabetes and rheumatoid arthritis so mm -hmm. it is a one day clinic you have one physician trying to uh, and the, looking at over a hundred so people because yes. in each of those yes. categories as i you i, I have said uh, pressure diabetes, rheumatoid, and then SLE, the minority, you will get squeezed in there. But the numbers are big. He's alone. He's overwhelmed. Mm. He has other duties. And even in Chirudu, when he goes there, there is only this one physician that those mm. many people are supposed to see. There is no way he's going to give you more than three minutes of his time when you go to see. Mm. So in the public, in the, in the, in the government, setting where you can maybe get a service for free. It is a one-day clinic for a few hours mm -hmm. and he's also a human being. He's going to get tired and he will only see that many number of people in that given time. So, no, mm -hmm. the government has not accepted that. We, we, when you get a flare, a flare is when the, it, you, like, you get an attack, maybe let me call it an attack, you're going to get mm -hmm. out of your pocket and you have to take care of yourself. If you cannot afford it, the repercussions, of course, uh, it is mm. it is uh, on your health. So, uh, unfortunately, we have not been assisted. And even the other organizations that you could say under which maybe we might fall, maybe people with disabilities, and as I had said earlier, you may mm. not qualify as a bold person because mm. you have no physical evidence of disability. Mm. So, they don't mm -hmm. take us seriously. I have tried several times to have a sit down with people with a, uh, who are taking care of people mm -hmm. with disabilities. And unfortunately, it has not brought fruit because as you can see, when I come to you, I am okay. There is nothing wrong with me. Mm -hmm. So no, unfortunately we have not been accepted and uh, we are relying on the goodwill of family, friends, and most of the people, I would say 90%, or even 95% of people living with lupus are not gainfully employed. So you have a financial burden that is supposed to be taken on by either family, friends, or, or well-wishers. And in these times where everybody is struggling, it is not easy. So if, uh, if we could get partners who are willing to stand with us, it would be very good in a way of support, whether creating awareness or uh, providing uh, like sunscreens or hats or lip balms, it would go a long way in uh, making the lives of people living with lupus a little bit easier. Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, Mariam, um, uh, how many members does your organization have uh, having lupus? Uh, and how have we been supporting them regardless of the challenges? Um, on record, and, I ha mm -hmm. we have I'm afraid I've lost you a little bit. Uh, can you hear me? Um, Mpaji, can you hear me? 
Yes, yes, I can hear you. Clearly. I think I've I've lost I've lost Mariam network challenges. I'll go back to you, Mpagi, as we uh, get to know more about your organization. Um, uh, is it member based? How many members do you have that have uh, low pass, and how do you like to be uh, assisted by the international community? Okay, thank you. Um, because in our organization, I'm the only person with lupus. Um, of course, it's a rare disease. And the problem with uh, these rare diseases is that they don't attack someone who has experience uh, or who has, who's an activist. They attack anybody randomly. So the biggest challenge that we have with uh, people who have uh, SA lupus is that there is no experience. Others have not uh, gone so far with studies because the disease is taking much. It's too expensive for them. So some of them fall out of school and they are really on jobs. So there's a lot, uh, there's need for support to help patients start businesses because even though it's bake, bakery, you know, uh, baking skills, they can make what they call gluten-free cakes because somebody who has SA lupus um, cannot, some of them can't eat foods with gluten, which is also something that's very rare here in Africa. I you know our food is all based on gluten, this flour, wheat and ray that i mean uh, barley wheat and ray that is in food so by just learning those skills of making of baking cakes and then they make cakes that are gluten free could really really help them so support to organize trainings for patients would really take us a lot um, forward so um from the international donors we actually call for funding to you know carry out research funding for patients with with the disease SA lupus so we can carry out research for uh, the disease, um, also buy sunscreen so that we don't have to put the patients on pressure to buy sunscreen. Because right now we are getting funds from patients to you know, provide sunscreen to fellow patients who cannot afford. Or they, they already have a burden of the disease and expenses. So we need funding for that. Um, I also call on doctors to actually um, you know, uh, request patients to do tests because that's where it all begins. If we don't have patients with the disease, there is not much we can do. We need doctors to request patients to do tests and encourage them to do tests. Uh, this whole idea of black, white, that doesn't work. I mean, we, the world mm. is, doesn't, or biology doesn't see the world in colors. Nature doesn't discriminate on grounds of color. So we all have to look at patients equally and you know, recommend for the tests. So it goes back to donors, provide funding for projects that are being implemented with people who have uh, the disease so that we can raise awareness through press releases, buy sunscreen, you know, and carry out yes, research. Um, things are very important, and I cannot emphasize them uh, uh, much more. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I was reading through the chat, the messages we have posted there. Of course, we have been giving a way forward and encouraging people uh, not to get afraid um, uh, to connect, to interact, to marry uh, people with the lupus. That is very encouraging. Of course, we are giving the positivity of it. And we are mentioning something very important, which I do believe we should all together encourage the government of Uganda to do for us, for our people, wherever they are, so that they can be fr free testing I do believe that as we lobby international community and international friends, there are things we should do um, as NGOs in Uganda, uh, starting with lobbying at the hospital administration, uh, lobbying the Ministry of um, Health, um, and the research centers uh, which are involved in uh, 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 research on health, um, Center for Disease Control, for example. I'm just giving pointers uh, where I would refer your organization uh, as a starting point uh, so that we can be able to engage from within as we engage from without, because there is support we can get from within as we look for support uh, from without. Uh, Mariam, uh, it's good we are back. I'm sorry we have challenges with the network, and I know it's a general problem. It's not your fault. Uh, but I'd like to take you on from there. Uh, uh, Mariam, uh, with uh, the Lupus Initiative Uganda, um, and we are now appealing to uh, the international community, uh, um, individuals and organizations that can be able to uh, see this video, get our call. Um, uh, how do they support your initiative? Uh, may you please, uh, in brief, take us through what they can do to support um, the GoFundMe link and specifically 
uh, how uh, this kind of support can be tracked uh, so that we can know uh, that uh, there is need for this support and then there is feedback uh, when the support is given. Mariam, back to you. Okay. Um, in as, as far as the uh, Fund uh, project, uh, it was actually set up with, uh, by one of uh, our members. Um, you can support uh, the, I see the partner the, the out there. You can support this is something that an undertake uh, my contact. The logo is right there. Uh, the the link the link is right there on the the book the book page. You can just go there if you can put something wherever you are, it doesn't matter if you get to the get to the page. They, they will definitely get because uh, we are starting with a simple basic of the to take care of the people, of course, that you already know of the condition, and of course, educating on the importance of using these things that it is not a show, it is not a show like if you're using a sunscreen, you don't have to be ashamed that you're using it, it is not a show, it is uh, mm. about your health and uh, how to use, how to, to use. It is amazing, some of us. Do not know how to use a sunscreen. How do I use it? When do I use it? So, how much do I use? How frequently do I use it? Um, these are things that we are slowly learning in our group, and uh, all thanks to Mr. Ampati, he has really helped us in that area. But uh, anybody who likes to discuss, the book button is still running and it can be used. And uh, anybody who has some, no matter how. Um, unfortunately, uh, some of the, the questions you were asking me, it was keeping, I didn't get them. Is there something I'm not addressed as far uh, as the question? I do uh, think, I do understand that you have answered the questions well. And of course, Impagi was able to uh, clarify on a number of issues which you had left out due to network uh, shutdown. So I'm satisfied with that. And I do believe that our viewers will be able to understand more about LOPAS. Uh, I'd like you to um, uh, guide our viewers, especially um, how to get to you online, uh, is there a website, is there uh, a blog? Uh, how do they look you up? Um, maybe your individual uh, contacts and all that. Mariam first. Um, uh, if uh, Lupas, Lupas Initiative, uh, we are on Facebook, we are on Instagram and uh, Twitter at uh, Lupas Uganda. Um, you can look uh, for us there. We have a website of the Yes, Mariam, I can hardly hear you right now. I don't know whether uh, everyone has heard what you have said, um, but I've heard a, a little bit of the Instagram and... Yeah, okay. I couldn't... Uh, on Instagram, yeah. yes, yes. On Instagram, we are there as uh, Lupus Uganda. And also we have a Facebook page, Lupus Initiative Uganda where we share some information on Lupus or upcoming events. And uh, we are also on Twitter as uh, Lupus that That is capital L, capital U, as one word. Thank you very much. Dear viewers, you can always um, check out Lupus work on Twitter, Instagram, uh, email, and I do believe WhatsApp. You can be what? able to get in touch with WhatsApp. There's a number there for WhatsApp. People can get back to you quickly. Yeah, yes, there is uh, a number to, to WhatsApp uh, for for the for the uh, for 
to direct direct if you want to contact somebody at the fascination direct uh whatsapp and accept it yes um the number is uh you have to start with a country and now two five six um seven eight five four two two seven nine can I repeat it? Yeah, yeah, please repeat it. Repeat it because people may, you never know, people these days use World Remit. You may have a donor would like to uh, donate directly on your phone. So it's important to give um, the WhatsApp number, to give a telephone number. Uh, as we wait for uh, Mariam, as we do conclude, um, uh, Mr. Mpagi, um, your organization, the Might Foundation, uh, I do believe that you are ahead of uh, uh, the Rupas Initiative of Uganda, and I do believe you have quite a wealth of expertise in the field. Um, what is your take on uh, uh, taking more publicity to the Parliament of Uganda, for example? Uh, have you thought about that? Ms. Ampagi, do you hear me? Mr. Mpagi? Mpagi, can you hear me? Um, I think I've thought about it to involve mm. members of... Yes, I can hear you. I don't know if yes. you can hear me now. I can hear you loud and clear. Are you getting me? Yes, yes I can, I can, I can hear, hear you. you yes. And I can actually mm. see you clearly. I don't know if you can hear me. I do. I do. Mm. I can hear you. Go ahead, Impagi. Okay. Go ahead. So, You're looking for... Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So, um, yes, we have tried... I have tried to involve members of parliament and ministers, just as Mariam. Um, but I think mm -hmm. the biggest challenge that we face the kind of doctors we have, because remember, when you seek a minister or a member of parliament and they're going to seek a government doctor who in turn mm -hmm. will tell them, ah, no, the disease exists amongst white people. How much attention is going to be given to the disease? So that, that's the biggest mm -hmm. challenge. There is really need for awareness raising and the need to train doctors. Of course, we can't train them medically, but we can train them on social values that you know what they are doing is actually discrimination and nothing to do with medicine. So there is that need to raise awareness and take doctors through a training workshop to know about the disease. All these things cost money. And that's why we need funding um, from donors. So that is the biggest challenge with uh, government officials. However, they're already doing a good job with people who are suffering from albinism because at least for them, they're providing them with sunscreen for free. So government can actually provide people with SL lupus with sunscreen for free. Okay, So we need a program like that. Um, maybe from donors, would call them to, you know, to really, really, really uh, work with patients. Because if you only work with doctors and their approach is, uh, you know, from a racist angle, you will not really understand or appreciate the disease. You need to involve patients yes. every single step of the way, even though it means involving them in um, committees of donor organizations. That's one step to actually understand the disease. Yeah. Why I was mentioning the parliament is because uh, a few years ago, I was part of the campaign uh, to promote albinism awareness. Uh, in Uganda because uh, we discovered that uh, few people actually knew about how marginal these people were. But when these people pushed and pushed and pushed, the parliament got involved. And somehow, um, I do remember about two years ago, um, the, the costs, the taxes on the products for their skin, I think we had dropped. There's a way parliament uh, got involved. That's why I was thinking of uh, creating more awareness. Uh, uh, for example, going to the eco parents Committee uh, that is an eco-parentist uh, committee in the Parliament of Uganda, where some of these petitions can be taken and then followed. Uh, look, we are being uh, marginalized. I'm just giving thoughts as a person who has lived in Uganda, who knows how hard it is, but of course also looking for a way forward. As I said, we are going to look for a solution from within and from without. We are going to try individuals beyond Uganda, 
NGOs beyond Uganda, but also look from within. How do we create more awareness? How do we make them to be more aware that basically there is one specialist, there is no easy way of uh, testing people with lupus. So it's a, a guess, kind of uh, try and error. People get a disease, they don't even get to know they have it, and it breaks them down. So as you said, rightly so, we need to create more awareness. As we look outside, we need to look also within um, our own parameters and see how much we can do. Uh, Mariam, I'm sorry, has... I'm going to cut you a little bit. I won't cut you short there. Um, yes, I think yes. the benefit with people who have albinism and yes. is that, you know, when you're making an argument, when you have albinism, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say that what mm -hmm. you said is not right. It's all right. Yes. And we need to seek yeah. solutions within. But the advantage mm -hmm. of people who have albinism is that it's an argument that at least doctors are behind. You understand so yeah even though it's the equal opportunities you. committee mm. even mm. Though it's the equal opportunities committee you know they seek doctors doctors support what they're saying okay uh, mm. even, if, even if it's parliament parliament will always even though it's uh, my father they always seek an opinion of a doctor now mm. my uncle is a doctor but when my father seeks on an, seeks for an opinion about SA lupus the first thing that my uncle who's the doctor says is that no the disease are not existing does not oh I get, so I get that even my father will shut down mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so that's the biggest mm -hmm. challenge with SA lupus that we need to really carry out a training workshop for doctors to understand social values and that's mm -hmm. the challenge with you know these autoimmune diseases as long as you have doctors who are telling people in leading positions that no that's not a disease you should think about not in, mm -hmm. in, in our whatever, in our environment. It always mm -hmm. pushes down any opinion you're raising. It won't be given that attention. I do That's appreciate it. Thank you so much for, in, in, in fact, yeah, you have explained uh, much better. I was pushing in for the advocacy, but of course you are very right that the albinism are more visible, they are more seen. That a person with um, uh, lupus is more normal, is like you, like me. Mm -hmm. So I understand the challenge there, though we need to think more about how to go about it within our own communities, but also beyond. Uh, Mariam, as a way forward, as we do this fundraising, um, uh, we have mentioned um, uh, where people can find you. I, I think, did you give the number? I think the number, as you read it, you broke a bit. Uh, may, you, may you have that number again? Uh, plus 256, can't record, then the rest of the number uh, where people can it contact is, you directly. It is plus 256 uh, 785-42-7957. It is our number. 785-42-7957. Yes. And then? Mm. Five zero. Uh, seven eight five four two seven nine five zero. That is at the WhatsApp yeah. number where you can be able to direct a talk with uh, uh, Mariam and then get to know more how to support uh, the Lupus um, Initiative Uganda, which I do believe that uh, um, Pagi uh, Derek is part because also as uh, lupus. So when we support uh, lupus initiative in Uganda, we are directly working with a I do believe that would be the uh, best way to uh, work together through this. Um, as we do conclude, our program is one and a half hours always. We are short by three minutes, but I are going to take more uh, three minutes for Mariam and more three minutes for um, Pagi as we conclude. Um, I'd like you to have um, uh, your, your parting shot. What do you think is the Akatale Kika? What we cannot leave behind? What is so important uh, for the viewers to note as we do conclude? Let us begin with um, um, Pagi, and then we shall conclude with uh, Mariam. Pagi, your last shot. And of course, I do promise that we shall get you back whenever we have a chance whenever you can have uh, the opportunity to drum more support and cause more awareness. But for now, we'd like to hear your, your parting shot. That is that the, the, the cornerstone for um, this conversation today. 
Okay, thank you. Um, first, I wanted to share our contacts as my foundation. So you can reach out, yes. or you can reach us out on 0702-34-4242 on WhatsApp. We have an Instagram page. No, no, go, a, a bit call. slowly, Mpagi, a bit slowly. Okay. People don't uh, repeat the number. The number is 702 Mm. 34 yes 42 42 on what uh, viewers viewers who are outside uganda you remove the zero and you add plus 256 702 34 42 42 we'll be able to talk with uh mr mpagi derrick of uh, the mighty uh, foundation uh, in Uganda, and we'll get to know more of what they do, but also be able to uh, assist more in their work. Yes, Mpagi, as we go into the contacts now, yeah. Mpagi, back to um, you. So, okay, thank you. Um, so you can also find us on Instagram at Might Found, and then on LinkedIn, Might Foundation, Twitter, Might Foundation, Facebook, Might Foundation, and then we have a website, so you can go on Google and simply uh, type, type in Might Foundation, you'll find us. So um, I think the last thing that I, I cannot forget to mention is the fact that we need to thank Mr. Kato and uh, the Humanist International Organization um, who have created these different networks uh, around the world that are supporting people with different um, experiences in life including us with Lupus. So this is an opportunity that we are able to share that this great um, organization is creating for uh, different people um, in Uganda. So we want, I want to thank them because without this platform, I wouldn't be able to share what I've shared right now. Uh, they themselves need um, a lot of support from uh, different partners that exist. Um, on that, thank you very much, Mr. Katon. Welcome, it's not me alone. I have a team of people behind the uh, production. I have Dennis in Uganda. I have Kabeko Brian in Kenya. I have Linda Till in South Africa and a few other friends uh, all over the world. We are trying to spread awareness about lupus because we do believe that you do believe, we do deserve support, just like any of us would deserve that support. Thank you so much, Impagi. Back to um, uh, Lady Mariam as we do conclude. You are parting short. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having us today. And uh, on the parting shot, uh, one thing I should uh, let everybody needs to know about the fact that it's the most important thing. Super is not contagious. You're not going to get it by simply being in close proximity with me or share. Hmm. We need to create awareness. We need, people need to need to learn about it, need to talk about it, uh, as opposed to simply putting it down as a mental or spiritual uh, condition or illness. It is real and people are living with it and it is not. Uh, and also, we need to ensure that the suspicion index of lupus is increased among health workers because they are the people with harm. So if they have no idea what they are dealing with, then it, uh, it, is, uh, it, is, it is not going to be, it, we are not going to get anywhere. So as they are doing, they are, uh, they, they are like, they usually go back to uh, medical, like those small, uh, small workshops they have, or this is something that could be discussed because most of them hear about it in their medical schools and they leave it there in those books and that is where. Mm -hmm. And finally, since people live in Lupus, are known, can, uh, in most cases, cannot be gainfully employed. We need to empower people, people living in the finance. They need to get financial empowerment, maybe a few projects that they can do that can be self sustaining and get them some kind of income with it fitting their energy levels. That would also be uh, very nice because then it breaks the chain of dependence financial dependence, which mm. also comes with so many other problems. Maybe next time when, if you can have a spark, I can also talk about it. But I think on a party note, that is what I have. Yes, thank you so much. Dennis was asking, Dennis was asking, anyone of you can answer this, he was asking that um, uh, which uh, 
uh, health facilities which um, uh, health centers in Uganda have the capacity to do, to run lupus uh, tests. Uh, uh, I don't know. I think you have even answered this, but you can, Mpagi, can give it a shot. Um, which health centers in Uganda have the capacity to run uh, to to run uh, lupus uh, tests? Okay, so you can find tests at Akakan Hospital. Okay, yeah. they are available. There's Chirudu Hospital, uh, in Zambia Hospital. But what you have to do is to ask for a rheumatologist because that's the doctor that specializes in treating SA lupus. And at least those are the three hospitals where I know that you'll find a rheumatologist. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Impagi, um, for... Also, yes, uh, Mariam? Sorry, sorry. Also, uh, other places mm. are maybe, like, I have a dispatcher done. We have Ebenezer Laboratory, and uh, we mm. also have Lancet, Lancet Laboratory. Although, depending on where you go, the options that are very safe are the ones that are a bit uh, cheaper, slightly cheaper. But uh, when you go to mm. maybe, for, for example, Lancet is a bit high end, but you can also access um, uh, the test there at Lancet Laboratories and uh, at the same Thank you very much, Mariam. Thank you very much, um, uh, Derek Impagi. Thank you very much, everyone, for uh, following us in this show. And of course, uh, being supportive. We do encourage you to reach out to uh, Derek Impagi of the Mighty Foundation. They have given you the contact. And also uh, Lady Mariam Nasaje of Lupus Initiative Uganda. Do give them the support uh, that you can share this information with your friends. Uh, reach out to them so they can be able to support them, manage this uh, health challenge. Uh, thank you very much for being part of the show, Mariam. And thank you very much for being part of the show, Derek Impagi. From me and my entire team, we say we meet again and be better and be positive about life. Everything will be handled going forward when you have the positivity. To the fundraiser, to the viewers, please consider uh, supporting the fundraiser, which you see on the screen. And of course, you can donate a through a GoFundMe uh, link, which is right on that screen. We do promise that we are going to put this conversation on our YouTube channel, which you can always visit even a year or two from today, you can always visit and see what these organizations do, but also help them to support them be able to manage the situation. Thank you very much, everyone. We shall be back with these very people in the near future and talk more about this. For now, thank you very much. Stay safe and stay positive. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Dennis and the team, Mr. Kato, thank you.